as EA Sports coverage of the NFL is on the air. A few short moments ago, running back Todd Gurley trying to fire up the Ram faithful here in Southern California as his guys get set to do battle with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Rams team as they interplay. They've got all W's on the ledger so far, a perfect 6-0. Yeah, still a long way to go in this season, but they're showing everyone early on that they intend to be there in the end. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jaguars, they come in in the midst of a pretty bad stretch here. Losers of five straight. So many different reasons teams hit the losing skids, but the best way out of it, something has to happen positive early in the game. Draw play for Gurley. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. On third down, Burns. Man, open, it's cup. He's got it. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Off play action, Burns under a heavy rush and down he goes. Josh Allen, he's the one to get him and that is sack number seven for him on the year. They win zone blitz there, obviously successful. What makes the zone blitz successful? Well, just go ahead and let's break the term down. Zone means they're gonna play zone behind them in coverage, not man to man. But the zone blitz, why it's confusing to offenses? Because oftentimes defensive ends or defensive tackles will drop back into coverage and linebackers or safeties will usually fill that gap and blitz in their spot, messing up the blocking responsibilities. And they'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. 23 yards the pick up there. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. From the 21, it's second and 10. Throwing again, Burns. He gets it to Cooks. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. Seventh play of the drive, fourth coming on third and eight. From the gun, Burns. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, maybe said, forget about the sticks. We want six. Now Kaimi Fairbairn for the field goal try. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. 
The kick by Fairbairn is good. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3 nothing. Had just the one big play on the drive, but that was enough to put him in field goal range. They had one big play of what they hope will be many others throughout the game. Every team has a different target for the number of plays like that, those explosives that we talk about. That allowed him to put points on the board on that drive. Let's see how the rest of the game goes. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that, that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Well, CD, a lot of times like to separate speed and quickness, and they've got a back that's both. We know that he's fast in the open field, but, man, his first step is so quick, too. It is something, isn't it? Because you think of that type of speed getting to the perimeter and turning up field, but also when you run those inside runs, he can get into the secondary so fast the linebackers don't have a chance to react. They keep it with Fournette on first down. Oh, Fournette loses it. It's out. And now the Rams have got it. Going the other way. And they have possession. And they have it at the 38-yard line. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. So they need to determine if that knee was down the before the ball was review. coughed up. And they also wanted to make sure that the ball was possessed as they were going through that the ball wasn't working its way free before the knee hit the ground. Start out here with a jet sweep. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. From the gun, Minshew to throw. He's got his tight end, O'Shaughnessy. And he's taken down inside the 30. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work. And that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Fournette, a first down carry. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Out of the gun is Minshew. Yeah, he's got it. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. 15-1. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he'll 
take this one in for a Jags touchdown. It's the fullback. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Jaguars have taken the lead. And boy, that was a heavy set. I think they had three tight ends out there. The fullback, they just, you knew what they were going to do. Yeah, they weren't trying to fool anybody at all, were they? There was none of this show you heavy set, bootleg it out. Nah, nah, nah. Big guys up front, hand it to the big guy in the backfield. Extra point tacked on by Lambeau. And that makes it a 7 3 lead. That time, a six play drive. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. And Lambeau now, after the touchdown, he'll kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And after the field goal last time, let's see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them wanted to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Now that'll be caught by Cup. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Looking to throw. Burns. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep for the Jags, D.D. Westbrook. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Leonard Fournette making his way back out there. Those are his numbers through roughly the first half of the season. And given that, you'd have to think he's on pace for a 1,000-yard campaign. Steady as he goes. Steady goes the offense. But you know what else is happening, too? Because they are a team now recognized for the ability to run the football. You've got to be able to throw it better now, right? Better throwing lanes, better opportunities for the guys downfield. Maybe more one-on-one -on -one coverage, which you should be able to beat easier. Yeah, he's, he's establishing not just a tone, but an identity for his team. And that's a discussion we had a couple days ago in the team meetings, talking about this running game opening up the passing game. We'll see if that continues to happen. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Here's Minshew. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Here's Logan Cook now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it has one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. Full start, offense. 
Maybe anticipating a blitz, and they jumped. Yeah, and if we saw it, you know that they saw it. The bad guys might have been coming on that play. Had to pick them up, and they jumped. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Following the penalty, it's Gurley. He takes this for three to the 29. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Operating from the gun, Burns. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively, brings up fourth down. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. So here are the Jaguars to take over on offense. They've dropped five straight coming in, so right now cherishing this lead. And they've got the football as well, first and ten. Now Minshew on first and ten. That's out to his running back, Fournette. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. Off play action, it's Minshew. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. Minshew throwing on third down. And that will be incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Here's Logan Cook now, standing right on his own five-yard line. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. A good pickup of six there on first down. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. That's a gain of 13 first down Rams. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. Off the play fake, Burns bearing it out deep for Woods. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Fights him off. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. From the gun on third down, Burns. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Tyler Higby. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Yeah. 
So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the gun, Burns, Cooks flashing the footwork. And that's complete to Cooks. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Back to the ground game here, Gurley. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now it's Gurley. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. They run, it's Gurley. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. From the gun on third down, Burns. They'll get this one to cut complete. And he picks up the first as he's able to take it down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. I think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, ball gets tipped in the air, because if that happens, then it's fair game for the defense. On first and goal, Gurley. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. Todd Gurley. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Rams are going to jump back in front. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. That was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's finished off by a Todd Gurley touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken in at the 1. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Let's go! The Jags and Leonard Fournette making their way onto the field. He's been good. They've utilized him well, but they're losing here in the second quarter. What might they change offensively? I think that what you try and do is expand how you get the ball to him a little bit. Get him out in open space, maybe swing the ball to him. What's that they used to call it in the West Coast offense, the long handoff? Yeah. Serve as your running play that way, as well as continue to feed him the football. Some of these runs now may pop bigger later in the game because of the effects of running it. Sometimes people after a while, they don't want to tackle him anymore, or they get tired, or they get out of position, or he runs through tackles. Continue to feed him the ball. He's having that kind of game. Yeah, might they get him the ball in some space in some different ways here. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. They'll go play action here with Minshew. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Aaron Donald, it's his 20th sack of the season as he continues what could be a record-setting campaign. That's three sacks now, and that's not much of a surprise to me, nor should it be to you. This team, they lead the league in sacks. Yeah, they do. This is something that we are starting to witness time and time again. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Fournette on the counter. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. The Jaguars on third down. Two for five to this point. This will be third and 15. Minshew sets to throw. Nowhere to 
escape, and he goes down. Aaron Donald in there for the sack, and that is now 21 for him on the year. Wow, what a season. He's the NFL sack leader coming into the game, and now that's two more that he's added to his total. He wants some separation from spot one and two in that sack category. Here's Logan Cook now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Now the Rams offense, they work their way back on the field. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a... And Gurley fumbled it. Gurley fumbles the football. It's loose. And the Jags grab it. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Look at DJ Chark as he and the rest of the offense head back out, sitting right around the midpoint of the season on pace for 1,000 yards. Good year so far, and I'm sure film study being devoted to him a little bit more on the other side. They have to because the pace that he's carrying right now, if you're, if you're pushing a 1,000-yard pace as a receiver, that means he warrants your attention. And right now, precision is going on with their offense, kind of like that timepiece you wear on your wrist, you know, <laughs> that good stuff. you got to knock that off somehow, chip away at that timing, change things up a little bit, and make them go to other things and make them do those things better. Yeah, try to make them uncomfortable. Not many teams have been able to do that so far this year. The L.A. offense ready to go for their next drive. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. you got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. On the handoff, it's Gurley. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. Now a handoff for Gurley. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. It's a gain of 11 and a first down L.A. Now that's how you start to get back in the good graces of your head coach. Remember, he fumbled on the last possession. How about the faith they showed him, giving him the ball again, and he repaid him, picking up a first down. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Operating from the gun, Burns. Quick hitter here, it's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Second and three. Dumps it off to Gurley. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 24-yard line. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. A run with Gurley there on first down. Going to get about four yards. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. On second down now. 
Meredith. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he will have the first down before he's tackled at the 12. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. A bit of a catch for him to remember. That's number 400 for his NFL career. Not a bad number at all. This quarterback now 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. Back to throw. Burns. Open man, Higby, the tight end. A gain of six there on first. How about the timing on that one? Where they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Second and four. And it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Looking to throw. Burns. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The Jaguars getting set to go. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They try to run on first down, but this defense says no dice. They stop them a couple yards behind the line of scrimmage. Call it a long of two on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. And the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. On the draw, this is Fournette. So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking to throw it. Minshew, he'll check this one off to Fournette. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. This quarterback now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. Eight of 10, it's first down. Now Minshew, it's complete, stills. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. Now Leonard Fournette. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. On second and nine, Minshew looking middle, and it's incomplete. 
The Jaguars on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and nine. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. This is Josh Lambeau. He hit from 57 a year ago. This will approach NFL record territory. It's a 62-yard attempt. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Coming up at halftime, we remind you once again that we're going to check in with Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have stats and scores from around the... Oh, look at this! A flip to the kicker. He's going to try to run for it. And this winds up a disaster. Nowhere near the marker. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. And it'll be a turnover on downs. A first half update now from Philadelphia. An early lead in that game for the Falcons. Matt Ryan with two first half touchdown passes. Get a look at this offense led by Cooper Cup as they make their way back onto the field. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in this zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate him. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. Throwing on first down, Billy. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. Here we go. Second and six. Over the middle, it's complete. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. They're giving the yardage on the pass and half the distance to the goal line. Because they're inside the 30. So now you don't march off the full 15, right? You have half the distance to the goal. In any event, that's precious real estate given up. So now then the penalty's got them set up with a first and goal. From the gun, Burns. And that one's complete to Gurley. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Todd Gurley standing by his lonesome in the backfield here. Second and goal. Second and five. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Finding his way home for the sack that time, Taven Bryant. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. So the sack means it's third and goal now from the 10. Operating from the gun, Burns. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. So we are at halftime here on Halloween as we send you cross country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, make sure you avoid the crazies out there and welcome in everybody to this Halloween edition of our EA Sports halftime report. We'll start with a couple of rivals on the West Coast. San Francisco hosting Seattle in the NFC West. And it's the Seahawks who have the lead in that one. Russell Wilson has thrown a touchdown pass. From there, we head down south to Tampa to check on the Bucs at home at Raymond James Stadium. 
and they were winners as they defeat the visiting New England Patriots. Andrew Luck, a strong performance there, over 300 yards passing with three touchdowns in the victory. Finally, let's get to Philadelphia. Check on the Eagles at home at Lincoln Financial Field. And at this point, they trail the visiting Atlanta Falcons. Two touchdown passes there for the former MVP, Matt Ryan. Meanwhile, in our game, it's been a back and forth first half. Who can put it together in the second half? For the answer, we turn it back over to our broadcast team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Call it no gain on the dump off, and it's third down. And that's when it's fun to play defense. When you're able to diagnose a play right from the beginning, get all your guys to the football and spill the play, that's when you have a lot of fun playing on that side of the ball. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. This defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. First down, Burns. It's Williams on the catch. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Here's Gurley. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And it'll bring up a second and 13. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Let's go, defense. Let's get out the field, defense. Switch, switch. They'll keep it on the ground. Meredith and tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard, stop short of the 35. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. To throw on third down, Burns. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And they will rally and stop him short of the first down. They get him to the ground at the 26. They'll get 10 there, but it leaves him just short for fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And an update from a game going on up in Santa Clara. The gap there has widened. The Seahawks just scored again. Russell Wilson with one touchdown pass thus far. 
So put another three on the board. All things considered, a good opening drive to begin the third quarter. And as a defense, the way that this game is going, you're excited to see those points go on the board. Gives them a little bit of leeway to play with when they're out on the field, but they're real excited to see their offense score. Now they get to go out there and do their part. This will be taken in at the one. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Here comes the Jags offense now. Time for their first possession of half number two. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting Ooh. comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. On second and 10, Minshew. And he'll get that to Fournette, complete. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Back to throw here. That's to his running back, Leonard Fournette. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Ten yards there, good enough for a Jags first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. This quarterback now, 11 to 15 through the air. Here's first and 10. They'll run with Fournette. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. That's gonna go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. If these guys are gonna chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage would be found. Come on, set, 10 2 stop. Hey, check, check. And let's go. They'll run it again with Fournette. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to throw up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. Here's Logan Cook now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. We got this. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns from the 26 they'll line up on second and four back to the workhorse today it's Gurley and he has met at the line of scrimmage and he goes down right there no gain on the play that time and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four back to throw Burns and they'll set up the screen to Gurley and they're able to get this one across the 35 it's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They're not ready for this, man. They're not ready for this. They still play a Here's Gurley now, out of the gun. 
A gain of three, second down. The last run got three, now here's second and seven. Here's a second and seven. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on, third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. Get him, baby. Get him, baby. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he's on to punt for L.A. This is away and a very good kick, angled for the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's something out there. You got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Again, it's Fournette. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back at the two. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Logan Cook now. He's been terrific so far. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. Taken from just outside the 30. Officially, that'll be a 63-yard punt. Well done. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you content to play the field position game? You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. A gain of six there on first. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. On first and ten, Burns. Then he'll find his target, Woods. It's complete. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. Is under review. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn to an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. 
and that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination of whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably... Touchdown, L.A. Cooper Cup, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Rams tack on to their advantage. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? R-A-C. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. So the call is made by Sean McVay. They're going to go for two. You must be, you must be getting tired of seeing From the gun, Burns. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. Well, they tried to get two and ended up getting none because the quarterback had nowhere to go with the ball and ends up getting sacked. Nowhere to go at all. Great job, though, defensively. They were ready. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Well, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Meanwhile, they take a shot to start the drive, but this is going to wind up incomplete. Ball on the 30 as they come up second and 10. Fournette. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And the Rams now coming out on the field. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four minute. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Tech McKinley made his way into the backfield. Defensive end gets in there that time. They were in a 4-3. What's the responsibility of the ends versus the tackles there, Charles? Well, most of the time, when you talk about the ends, they're your pass rushers. They're, they're the guys that you turn loose to try and get to the guy who's going to throw the football. The tackles, usually more of the run-stuffing variety. But the way this game is advanced, you're wanting a little bit of everything out of all of your guys. But let's just go ahead and break it down and make it simple. The guy who's the right defensive end versus the right handed quarterback that's the blind side he's going after the quarterback he's going to put him on the ground gotta imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack it's second and 18 looking to throw burns got his man it's williams a gain there of 21 yards 
And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Man, that's trash. That's trash. Switch. Switch. Let's go, baby. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Back to throw. Burns. 